Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, that's for art. I'm going to continue reading this book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution by Arthur Tamplin and John Goffman. And I don't know if any of you guys are super pissed off, but the news is coming out that the seals are dying because of acidification in the Pacific. Without a single word, not one word about Fukushima and the nuclear meltdowns. And which, by the way, if you look at the news feed for Fukushima Daiichi on YouTube, that's a feed from TEPCO, it looks like there's a fire in number four nuclear power plant. I mean, ongoing, unmitigated, that's been going on for probably four or five days now, which means in America we're beginning to get the MOX fuel poisons coming over here. So people need to make sure they keep their children out of the rain, they keep themselves out of the rain, keep their pets out of the rain. Don't go out in the snow. Like, just be careful because this is how it gets into our bodies is we're just not careful about it. Uh, this is we're in the fission stew folks and we have to pay attention otherwise we're going to have masses of the population dying of cancer and leukemia remember for every rad of radi two rads of radiation 32,000 extra cancers which was discovered in the 60s summarily ignored but truly that's why we have an epidemic of cancer and uh, I'm going to press on without any grand illusion that people give a flying fuck about this. And the maybe 25, 30 people that watch this video probably get the same response from their relatives as I do. Like nobody wants to talk about it and they all think I'm a fucking lunatic. I wish I could wake up in the morning and just ignore Fukushima. I wish I could wake up in the morning and just go about my life and not wonder when the fucking axe is going to fall on all of this. Because something's going to happen. It is, it's bound to happen. We have had four nuclear meltdowns that are completely ignored. Completely, 100% ignored by the international community. 100%. I'm seriously disappointed in, in mankind and humankind, womankind, and in these two-legged walking creatures that think they're the smartest fucking thing on the planet. So smart, we're killing everything on the planet. And the reality is, is yeah, I get it. We're, we are the guinea pigs to the Rothschilds. We're there like they could care less whether we live or die. In fact, they're hoping we all die. That's the plan. Title of this book. Population control through nuclear pollution. Definitely their plan. So let me get to it. I'm just at three minutes. I'm sorry, I had to rant a little bit. We are on page 107 at the subtitle called No Proof That Repaired Body Cells Won't Become Cancerous. Obviously, the human organism tolerates more radiation if spread over time than acutely for the production of acute radiation sickness. Why does it? Does it mean that the body cells repair the damage wrought by radiation? Every knows, everyone knows that acute radiation sickness comes from a loss of certain kinds of cells. Part of the sickness comes from the ulceration along the gastrointestinal tract, and part of it from the loss of blood elements, white cells, platelets, and red cells. Given time between application of radiation doses, the remaining unkilled cells can replenish the lining of the gastrointestinal tract, provide platelets to prevent the hemorrhage, and white and red blood cells for such needs as fighting infection and transporting oxygen. If the radiation is given all at once, death ensues simply because replacement of cells cannot keep pace with cell loss. But apparently little understood by so many atomic energy promoters is that this apparent repair of the body is a repair in the sense of providing replacement cells, not a repair in the sense that irreversible changes in the body cells, which will lead to leukemia and cancer, 5, 10, 15 years later have not occurred. There is no reason at all to believe that the ability to replace cells in an, in an ulcerated intestine means that repair of cancer-producing damage has occurred. So when atomic energy promoters point to the fact that slow delivery 
or divided delivery of radiation protects against acute radiation sickness. They should understand that this has absolutely nothing to do with late appearing effects such as leukemia and cancer. Nothing at all. But hope for such a delightful phenomena quickly overtakes scientific reasoning, and the hope is quickly translated into, quote, evidence, unquote. A radiation-killed cell cannot produce cancer, provided it can be replaced as, for example, in the intestine, proper function can be restored. But the very cell which provides the replacement can itself be mortally injured, in the sense that it can become a precursor of the fatal cancer 5, 10, 15, 20 years later. And this is what the real concern about radiation is all about, not acute radiation sickness. Evidence must replace mere hope. It is known that broken chromosomes can undergo mending. Further, it is known that certain damage to the hereditary material, known as DNA, can be repaired, at least partially. Whether these repairs have anything whatever to do with the type of injury leading to cancer is totally unknown. There is a proper way to find out whether any repair of cells with respect to cancer producing properties can ever occur over a period of time. It is indeed an important question. We have found no evidence whatever that this kind of repair is possible. And this is in like italics. It says, we do not say it is impossible. We say no evidence whatsoever has been provided to convince anyone that such repair is possible. Then it goes back to regular type. Hope means nothing. Evidence is everything. We have searched hard for evidence that the radiation damage of human or other animal cells can lead to cancer, that lead to cancer, can be repaired. We find none. Counterfeit evidence is abundant and unfortunately is widely quoted and ballyhooed by promoters of the technology. One special example of such counterfeit evidence is readily explained. If certain animals if certain animals cancer induction by radiation has been carefully I'm going to read that again. In certain animals cancer induction by radiation has been carefully studied. What is found is that at an early age a given dose of radiation produces many more cancers than does the same dose of radiation applied at a later age. Why sensitivity decreases with age we don't know. It's just true. And we saw the same phenomena in human beings, where the fetus in utero at less than three months is about 150 times as sensitive as the adult with respect to cancer and leukemia production by radiation. The need for a new set of standards. Clearly, if we irradiate some animals early in life, we'll get a certain number of cancers. If we take similar animals and start radiating them at the same age, but deliver the same total of radiation slowly into an advanced age, we get fewer cancers simply because part of the radiation is being delivered later in life when sensitivity to cancer production is dropping steadily. So when a comparison is made between cancers produced by radiation all at once early in life, versus the same total of radiation extended into later life, obviously more cancers are found in the radiation delivered all at once, simply because young animals are more sensitive than older animals. This is no evidence by the wildest imagination stretch of the body's ability to repair cancer damage. None whatever. Indeed, the investigators of this phenomena done the one experiment, excuse me, indeed, had the investigators of this phenomena done the one experiment they left out, namely delivering the all-at-once radiation late in life, 
they would have discovered that slow delivery of radiation produces more cancer than all at once radiation. Got that? That's where we're at now. Delivering an all at once radiation late in life, right? They would have discovered that slow delivery of radiation produces more cancer than all at once radiation. But this result would terrify the promoters of the technology, removing the hope for the hoped for weak read to lean on. Is this an accident that the experiment is not done? An oversight? Or is it an expression of the unconscious desire to favor the technology? We prefer not to try to answer this question. Why dispute motives when they are so complicated? The key lesson is that whatever evidence has been claimed for leukemogenic leuco, leucomogenic or carcinogenic repair is counterfeit evidence. Wow, I'm going to read that again. I've never heard of that word. The, the key lesson is that whatever evidence has been claimed for leucomogenic or carcinogenic repair is counterfeit evidence and no other evidence is available. This lesson has been lost on responsible biologists. The International Commission on Radiological Protection refuses to count on any repair of carcinogenic damage. Instead, they assume that all radiation produces its proportionate share of risk of leukemia and cancer. So does the FRC on paper. The chairman of the FRC, in calling for a sweeping review of all radiation standards, has made it abundantly clear he counts on no repair concerning cancer or leukemia risks. He asks for standards to be set considering all radiation effects to be cumulative, delivered slowly or rapidly. This is the only way of proceeding sensibly. Just as the issue of safe thresholds so with hoped for repair. It represents utter and complete public health irresponsibility to count on hoped for, unknown, prayed for ways of extricating the technology from admission of a serious hazard of its byproduct poisons. One may pause here and reflect for a moment on academic questions versus public health questions. Is it permissible to consider the possibility of there being some radiation dose below which cancer does not occur, the so-called safe threshold concept? Of course, it is, a per it is permissible to study the possibility that the changes wrought by cells and ionizing radiation, which later result in leukemia or cancer, might be partially repairable damage. Of course. Hmm. Wow. I I can't read this anymore tonight. This is really getting to me. The fucking liars of the promoters of nuclear technology. I mean, they know the harm it's caused us for 60 fucking years at least. And they're ignoring Fukushima. The seals are dying. Our children are dying of cancer at unprecedented rates. Our children, not the old farts, the children are getting cancer. And they're just like putting these babies through chemotherapy. And, you know, they have events now. They show them on television and use them to make money. It's utterly, utterly despicable and inhumane. And I... I, I have to say I'm super, uh, it's so despicable. It's embarrassing to be an American. That's how I feel. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of our government. I'm ashamed of our elected politicians. I'm ashamed of our media. These fucking idiots that put their, la, 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 la. That's all they do. That's all they do. And I'm super sick of it. Nobody wants to hear it while we're killing the fucking children and the innocent animals. The most innocent creatures on this planet are being destroyed by nuclear pollution. And people are just like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. Fuck you. I mean, I'm, I'm getting really angry about this. 
I'm going to end here, but I, I'm sorry I couldn't read very well tonight, and I could hardly read it all, but I'm just, I'm so off the charts, like I can't believe people do not care. What is it going to take? 